Thank you for joining us. Please enjoy this video from Monsignor Bill. Good day. It's good to be back with you in this forum. This weekend is the Solemnity of Christ the King. He is our King. And all of us have a King. Sometimes it's money. Sometimes it's prestige. Sometimes it's reputation. Many different things. People make different things their King. And they put their lives around that particular goal to have these things. And, and that's very, very dangerous. Our king, and you've heard it say to me all the time, the paradigm for uh, a good life is to put God first, spouse second, family third, work fourth, and everything down from there. And our king is just a tremendous, tremendous king. Now, earthly kings are usually a bit, a bit different. Some of them are very cruel and mean. There are some wonderful examples of kings and queens of saints uh, in the history of the church. And you can look some of those up. Uh, Elizabeth of Hungary, uh, Louis of France, uh, who were just beautiful people. And they had that sense of what a true ruler is. And our king is so powerful. First of all, you know, he comes and he wipes away our sins through the death and resurrection on the cross. So he has that love for you and for me, an infinite love. And he loves us personally. He doesn't, just, oh, well, okay, you're just in that group, so I love you. It's not that. Each one of us has a personal relationship with Christ, or we should have. But our king also will sometimes call us to great deeds. He will call us to, to vocations. He will call many, many people to become husbands and wives. He will have another call for those who are called in, into religious life in, 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 as a brother, as a sister. And then he will call some also to priesthood. And he will call us to those things. Say, well, I, I'd rather do this. God is going to give you and me the greatest happiness when we follow what he asks of us. Sometimes he will march into hell with the heavenly cause and say, come with me into this, heaven, in this heavenly cause that's going to be just maybe painful. But for the sake of others, for the sake of the kingdom, he will be with you. He will be with me as we do those things. He is a tremendous king. He has done all that we could possibly do to the point, even the, to the point of being totally in, innocent and dying for us guilty ones. So as we put our, our minds and hearts into the celebration of uh, Christ the King, find areas where he is not your king. Where, where do you not put God first? When do you put Christ over here somewhere and something else becomes your, your God? Maybe you, want, maybe you make your family your God. No. No. That, that's, that's not right. We have to put God first. That's our king. And he's a glorious king. And he tells us in the scriptures that at the end of scripture, He's going to be waiting on us as we sit at the banquet table and he serves us. That's a God we should follow. That's a king we can trust. He will not play games with us. He will always ask us to do what is best for us. So take some time today and just be by yourself and meditate on how much do I give of my life to my king? If it's not Jesus, then you have to make some changes. But be a subject of the king. 
his kingdom is going to be the most glorious of all. Trust him. And that, I think I used this in a homily a couple of weeks ago. Somebody asked uh, the little flower, St. Teresa, if uh, he would, if she would pray for him. And she said, yes. What, what do you want me to pray for? And the man said, I want to have clarity of, of, of action. I want to have a really clear, clear way to do things. And she says, I can't, I can't pray for that for you. And he kind of looked at him strangely, her, her stranger. And she said, pray for trust. Pray for trust. Our king, we can trust, does trust, and will always trust. And may Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.